Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are in the world. Welcome back to FRS Season 6, where we are going to be taking a trip to Spa here in Round 2. Now, this is one of the few tracks that have actually been on our season calendar every single season. So, this is a track that the guys know well. But, of course, new cars, new season, new drivers. This track has two DRS zones where, especially with these new car regulations, you can expect to see some a lot actually not some but a lot of overtaking heading into the uh les combs drivers will be able to reach their top speed of 210 miles an hour though we saw even faster for those running zero zero wings which seems to be the setup meta around here of course one of the action zones as well is going to be la source heading into turn one that tight hairpin right after the drs straight and of course as mentioned earlier les Com, where we've seen lots of overtaking and lots of shambles just all throughout the different divisions this uh, weekend. We might be seeing some soft, medium, and hard tires, but we might also be seeing some wet weather tires as well, as it looks like it's going to be some wet weather running for the qualifying session for these guys in PlayStation. But without further ado, we'll go ahead and cut to the action. And I am joined alongside with LC Fighter 99 the spa track merchant himself, race winner last time around yesterday. LC, how are you doing? I'm very good, thanks. Conditions, hopefully. All that looks saturated. Okay. Yes, it is uh, very, very wet out there today. As I unmuted the wrong thing. Okay, sorry, we couldn't. We couldn't hear you. How did? Um, uh, <laughs> how are you doing? Oh, sorry, I had you muted. Yeah, I was just saying the track looks nicely saturated, ready for some uh, some potential carnage. Yeah, so, it uh, looks like our uh, our little rain dance that we did beforehand uh absolutely it paid off so we'll have, so keen for it as well. we'll have to uh have to see um how it goes oh it looks like they uh they might be getting some dry running in the race i'm not 100 percent sure but we're riding on board with one of my favorite rookies this season ray rain who i finally learned how to pronounce their name along with ipswich as well um as they are heading out of the track, but it looks like it's actually Thy Milk Menace, who is going to be the first one across the line instead of lap time, running on inter tires. But it looks uh, a bit too damp for those, if I'm being quite honest. There's already a bit of discussion about whether the range of the race is going to be above, whether it's going to be. They're saying now it's going to start with the sun and immediately rain, which, if that's true. <laughs> It's going to be a bit of a mess, especially if you're like right behind your teammate. I don't know there's too many teammates. I mean, the Mercedes, for example, that could be an absolute nightmare if they both have to pit in uh, a short space of time. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Approximate forecast is a different beast. Yeah, it definitely is. And we even saw some drivers in the Xbox division uh, yesterday having a bit of confusion with Jeff, giving them different data depending on uh, which team you were driving for. So um, that's also something else to look out for is whether or not Jeff himself is going to be accurate across all the players or if, uh, or not Jeff, but whoever the new engineer is, um, if he's going to be kind and share uh, fair information. But Thigh Milk Menace coming around now to, uh, what is this, La Source, heading up to Radiator and U-Robe. As we ride on board with him and see if he's actually going to be able to, uh, ooh, a little bit of a lift there, having a downshift as well even, uh, running through there. So if it is a dry race, potentially, what kind of setup are you going to be running as you get locked in for Park Ferme? <laughs> um, I would I would still be running it to be dry if there's something to just doing the best in the rain and hoping that you know if, the thing is if you if you go for the especially around this track, if you put a load of downforce on and go for the pole, you are probably just gonna get overtaken anyway. It's not like a track where it's hard to pass. So I don't really think it's worth putting too much difference in for the wet setup. But if it was the other way around, if it was a dry quality and a wet race, I probably would put the emphasis on the race, really, because that's where you know, the points points are made. Yeah, and I gotta say, I'm a bit nervous as we're seeing uh, 14 drivers again 
And last time out, only half of them survived. So hopefully we got ourselves sorted out for today and we learned our mistakes from last time around. But I've been told that we are going to be running a broadcast formation lap, which hasn't seemed to be too great when it comes to warming up the tires. I know that some people in the Xbox struggled um, on the PC side of things. It's It hasn't been uh, too great warming up the tires as well. So... I guess we'll just have to wait and see, and especially if it is going to be starting on dry tires, um, that's going to be even more painful to try and get up to temperature, I would imagine, as Thigh Milk Menace crosses the line with a 156 to kick things off. Let's see, yeah, let's do uh, how much the track evolves as well. I don't know if there'll be any dry stuff towards the end, or whether it'll just keep getting. Oh, Mac, though, what's that? A 153.4. Wow. That should be pretty competitive, I would think, at this stage. Ooh, as Furry almost drops it there. We saw him unable to set a valid lap time out in Spain as well. Um, as Ipswich comes across the line and puts in a 155. There's Rain Rain coming in with a 153.6. So two tenths behind Mako, who's provisionally on pole. And it looks like the rain is starting to lighten up a little bit now. Only a little bit of drizzle, but it still is definitely falling down. But uh, it might be time for these enters to get into their own. I'm having nervous flashbacks to yesterday's qualifying with this changeable conditions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess <laughs> in your experience, since we saw a lot of people leaving it late to go out and set a dry running, what would be the strategy in, in that setting, uh, in that regards, do you go out, do you set a banker lap if it is going to dry up? Um, do you even bother going out on the enters and just wait? Or is it worth going out and setting a lap time and then coming back in as well? Worth doing a lap. I mean, what I did yesterday was just two push laps in the enters and then came in, which I think was the right thing to do. The, the problem was I, I went out on the softs to check if they were going to be usable. And when they were, I just went for a push lap. I should have come into the pits and refueled because uh, I left myself with one push lap, which I then invalidated. That was, that was game over. But it looks like it might dry up. Yeah, it does. If we don't get any more rain. I was going to say it looked for a second there out of turn one that uh, looked like the rain had come down as Robin and L is coming through. Now they'll be uh, not the next across the line, but they are coming up to the bus stop chicane. So it'll be close for him as he'll be coming across the line. It looks like it's not going to be too competitive, um, but it should put him up into the top six, I'd imagine. There, Oh, yeah, I might have misspoken. Just Mako and Ray Rain are in a league of their own. The only ones in the 153s right now. Uh, Dante in P3, a whole second behind Mako, uh, nearly currently. So, yeah, I would I would say that the track is evolving, but it doesn't look like anybody's actually going faster currently. As we'll go on down to the Alpine driver who has invalidated their lap, looks like OJ feels headed into the pits. So we are going to ride on board with Ad Advocat Leon. Uh, oh no, up through you rogue radiator and all that good stuff. Yeah, trying to find somebody. Robin, I imagine that he's... Oh, he's going for a double push lap as well. It looks like he's 800s improved on his lap in the Alpha Tauri. Yeah, it looks like he's got about 30% battery left, so he's going to have to manage it to get it to the end um, if he wants to improve, but... He needs, yeah, it's looking a little bit more sloppy now. I'd imagine he's probably diving into the pits, and he does have only eight tenths of a lap of fuel left. So, um, yeah, having to back out a couple of times here. He's he's pushing it a bit much. We'll see what the split is as he crosses the line. And, yeah, he's one hundredth down. Oh, it's gonna be, yeah. Personally, if I was him, I would bail out. It looks like he's struggling a little bit, and I don't really see this rain letting up. Um, I would be looking to see how much time we have left, but it's not showing for us right now as we cut to CB shutdown. There we go. Nine, nine is, uh, the cutoff. So yeah, this looks like maybe what I was hoping would happen yesterday, which is the full wet session and not the transition to drive. Also, there's one driver who gambles it and gets it right. Even just one dry sector 
would be, you know, especially if it's the middle sector, it's such a long lap. It could be seconds and make up, but you get it wrong and uh, you'll look a bit silly. Yeah, currently only three drivers who have yet to set a lap, although it looks like they're all currently on a flyer or on an outlap, so I don't think anybody's going to be waiting currently, but we'll have to see. Yeah, this track, it's coming to be a little bit late for this track to dry up now as we're riding on board with Bon Homie, who is uh, currently doing all right, I would say. I missed his split time earlier, um, but he looks to be on pace, at least with Robin and Ooh, as he invalidates it now. Uh, coming out of whatever turn that is. is that Bru I believe that's Bruxelles, the downhill long right-hander. Um, yeah, yeah Bruxelles, and the one after that, I think, is no, is no name, the left, and then it goes into Puan, I think. I mean, I should know this thing. <laughs> <laughs> the rain still currently not letting up. Furry Onyx. Ooh, if somebody went off the track ahead of him there, uh, potentially to get out of the way? I don't know. Nope. Looks like they're... Uh, yeah, Furry not going to be able to improve. Um, coming up to traffic as well as <laughs> they run very wide out of the current corner there. Um, we'll cut to Advocat, who is driving a bit slow to Bruxelles, coming up to No Name Corner now. Um, one of the other drivers who has yet to set a lap. We saw them on a flyer, but it was invalidated through U Rogue as they hesitate to take the eSports line through there to carry a bit more speed heading through whatever this one is whatever this corner name is uh okay okay i would absolutely butcher that in uh in a french accent so i appreciate you stepping up with the corner names currently yeah not looking like too fast of a lap just wanting to get one on the board that would put them up into p12 and with the time being um but we're starting to run out of time here and that rain is definitely not letting up as they run a bit wide there, but able to keep it on track, not invalidate their lap as they come up to the long run to the bus stop chicane with a little bit of some turns here and there. And are they going to be able to keep it full beans through there? It looked like they might have had a little bit of a let up, but they seem to be carrying a lot of fuel and they have plenty of ERS to do a double push lap. So that might be what they're going for here. As I speak, they dive into the pits. Cutting. One of the bonuses of the wet session is you can do double push to be easier on this game. The battery drains quite quickly. It does, and I don't know either, too, if how it w was in the rain for you. I, I mean, riding on board with OJ Fields and Advocat looked like that they were able to keep a lot of battery through their laps, but we were also looking at Robin, who uh, who he drained a significant chunk of battery during this wet running as well. So. Is that something else that they might be able to do uh, with the wet weather? Of course, it's hard to do a double push lap with the dry running, but um, being yeah, a spa merchant like yourself. A double, a double push in the dry is pretty much nothing. It might do it in the wet, you can do a double push and the battery runs out. I think I have like 15% at the end of the second push lap. I think, is that someone retired in the pits or is that on track? I think that was in the pits. We have a yellow sector uh, around Bruxelles, but it looks like that they are. Um, had enough of the rain. Yeah. Not, yeah, this track isn't drying, and I don't think. Yeah, the rain's still coming down, so I don't think it will dry out in time for these guys later on. A sick fusion, five tenths up, half a second up on their best time. That would not be enough, unfortunately, to put them over Ipswich. So let's see if they're able to do something in this final sector here which is really just a long straight followed by the bus stop chicane if they're able to make up any kind of time in it with their teammate uh, furry onyx behind them as well on an out lap would it be worth considering possibly doing a tow as well um since it's it seems like the just the drs and the straight line speed and the tow is so powerful in this game yeah well we saw in pc1 uh, Chibbles had a toe, and he said it was worth uh, a couple of tenths down the back straight. But in the wet conditions, it just feels like it's a recipe for disaster. To be honest, I think it's probably better off just focusing on your 
always very honest. That was a bit slow. <laughs> Manages to keep it together, heading down the Kimmel Strait now. We'll come across the first sector marker, and we'll see how much they've improved. It looks to be, I was going to say it looked good, but yeah, looked like that little slip up through uh, radiator costed them a little bit as they get, oh! Looked like they got really tail happy there too, running a bit wide there out of the final chicane in Le Comte. Coming up to that. Early enough, this is a good, uh, good place to get it wrong because it's early enough. You can turn the battery off and just get going again. Whereas if you invalidate in the last couple of corners, you've kind of got nowhere to go then. Yeah, um, looks like he might have bailed out as well. He certainly has plenty of, yeah, he, we can see his ERS charge. Uh, well, we can kind of see his ERS charge there nearly full and he's got plenty of fuel left in the tank as well so he might even be able to do with the amount of time that's left he could probably do two more push laps a double push lap um, if he's able to manage it with a constantly evolving track it's not a bad idea to just be out there and just keep pounding around i don't know how badly the inters degrade in this game certainly before the patch they were going forever at one point, but they, Cody's changed the game quite a lot, so it's difficult to tell whether... It's interesting that Amako and these guys are still in the pits, so I thought they might do two push laps, but they're going to be out of time uh, pretty soon. Yeah, they need to get out there. So, um, don't, don't do what I did, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I was going about to bring that up, where you came out of the pits with about less than a minute left in this session, and we were kind of, yeah. we were kind of shocked in the commentary booth. It was 1 minute 40 and they said insufficient time to complete a flying lap and I thought, oh, I'll be fine. <laughs> and, uh, no. And we definitely didn't catch any cuts on the track, uh, on stream or anything like that, for sure. Um, <laughs> I missed my breaking point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still... I'll pretend that Oh, invalidated out of there. As Ipswich oh, Ips retires from the session as well. Oh, did he... We'll go ahead and cut to, I believe it's Bonhomie that's going to come up to him next. So we'll see where he lost it. It's the flat, is it? Yeah, it's the flat left. Yeah, there, yeah, you can see him spun around. Is that where, um, I don't believe it was, but I was going to say Antonio Giovinazzi uh, lost it, but I believe it was a bit earlier in the lap where he yeah, possibly lost it. Yeah, he, he's lost it there a couple of times the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Bonhomie able to improve and jump over Robin and does have enough battery to do another push lap if he wants, but it doesn't seem like he's going. Yeah, no, he is going for it. So that's not it for Bonhomie as he looks to improve and hopefully jump up and start. Uh, well, currently sitting behind his teammate on the grid provisionally, but um, it'd be nice to get that one extra good slot, grid slot ahead of Ray Rain as well. As we see some yellow flags around Sector 2 as these guys are trying to uh, get their tires going. Get their tires one but free. Seven tenths improvement on his lap time. And that would just be enough to put him into the top ten. But of course, with the new rules and regulations, the tire choice is uh, available to anybody uh, on the grid today. Not just those outside the top ten. So it wouldn't matter too much, but it'd be nice for him to move up. Uh, a position or two as he comes around the final corner looked like he was a bit deep into that bus stop chicane as he's going to cross the line and improve and only jump up into p10 but nearly a second improvement not bad from fairy onyx who uh won't be starting in the bottom four which we saw was uh quite a problem last time around but he will be starting next to jeff god who also got caught up in the mayhem as well um as we'll go ahead and cut to i think he's done exactly what i did yeah. Yeah. Oh. So that's gonna be Ray Rain done and Dante coming up through. He's on soft. He's on soft. He's going for it. Well, he's gonna come across a sector time. We'll see how much he improves, but the rain's still down. DRS hasn't been disabled. He's three seconds up. That's. A big, yeah, as he's going to cut the track there. That's going to be his time over. So Mako currently putting in a purple Sector 1. We'll ride on board with him um, and see how much they're able to improve. Didn't see what kind of splits he had, but it is looking pretty good so far. Ooh, we just commentators cursed him. Oh, no. That's not him done for the session. Dante on the soft tires, not going to make an improvement. So Robin and L currently six tenths up, it says. 
as we see Advocate retire from the session as well. So Robin, this looks to be a good lap, but I just don't know if he had the pace earlier in this qualifying session, but hopefully the track evolution has been kind to him and we'll be able to bump him up and possibly nip that provisional pull away from Mako, but Mako with a 152-1 with a blister of a lap. Ooh, a purple sector two from Robin there. They said he's 1.1 seconds on his lap. He could sneak ahead or even P2 if he actually nails the last sector. Dante's got quicker though. Or has he? No, it's CB Shutdown. Yeah, CB Shutdown jumps ahead of Ray Rain. At the last second. Is Robin... Is he... Oh, it's not going to be P1. Oh, wow. All the way up into the second row for Robin. And of course, Dante on their soft tires not going to be improved yet. <laughs> They are way down currently. So that's going to be our provisional, or that, that will be our grid, not a provisional grid. That will be the grid for the start of this race. So let's talk strategy if it actually is uh, a dry session. <laughs> it depends because I had seen about on the chat that was saying it's going to be a a wet start or potentially a dry start that immediately goes wet so I'm I'm really not sure I mean if it's if it's a dry start and a whole dry session then medium hard is normally pretty strong hard medium's good if you're good at starts but the worry is you get stuck behind this oh wait this is that is the wrong that is the wrong screen there we go this is better um, but yeah, we saw we saw the hard strategy work for a lot of you guys in the Xbox division, especially yeah, two of you ended up on the uh, on the podium. Um, yeah, Quimbulus and I were nine seconds off of the hard tires, but you have to say we were helped by the safety car. I mean, perfect time because the others all pitted, so the risk with the sort of lap five to twelve safety car is if you're on the hards, you won't make it to the end on the medium, but all the medium runners have three pit stops, so it is a risk. The hard tire is always a bit of a risk, but so th then again, if it's, if it's going to be wet straight away, maybe you'd want to be on the soft tire just for a couple of laps into the rain, because you need the grip. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, is a medium to soft stint possible, or hard to soft stint possible, as well as it was in Spain? I would say hard to soft Yeah. It, it just feels like Codemasters has made them a, a pure qualifying tire. Yeah, and that seems to reflect how it is in the real life as well, with a lot of people not really opting for the soft tires at any point in the race except for uh, a fastest lap point towards the end of it, too. Yeah, they're not really a tire of choice. A lot of the time, in a late safety car, you probably chuck the softs on. But even then, a bit of a risk. It is. It, yeah, and unfortunately for uh, Quimbulus, I think he was trying for the hard, soft strategy as well. Or I don't know if he, that was his initial plan or just how he reacted with the safety car coming out, but it seemed to kind of mess up his flow when we got that second safety car as well, as it looks like these guys have finally loaded in to the grid, and I wish that there was a better way to see what tires they select, but they're setting their strategies getting their setups uh, underway. And what kind of changes would these guys be making right now coming from that wet qualifying session or just any qualifying session heading into the race now with regards to their setup? I mean, they can change pressures the front wing, but most of it's just go with what you've got now. Fair enough, fair enough. As we continue to wait for these guys, we don't have anybody readying up immediately, thankfully, um, like last time. Um, and I will work on that. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, let's see how. Uh, I I guess I got a stall as well while I do this. But um, yes. Uh, last time out we saw them uh, ready up a bit too soon, and uh, 
that ended up not being a uh, a great time as I try and turn your turn up as much as I can. Um, Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I can fix this. I can fix this. I remember I am a professional broadcaster. I am definitely not an amateur. This is not amateur hour as I crank you up now. All right, so give it a go. Uh, I think now you'll be able to... Uh, I think they'll be able to hear you now. Lovely stuff. Hello, everyone. There we go. He's back. I, and actually, I can turn you up. Even more, as these guys will be doing a broadcast formation lap, as we talked about earlier. Um, I'll crank it up just a little bit more as well. Okay, there we go. I think that that should be enough. Um, you might actually be blaring through everybody's eardrums, but broadcast formation okay. lap. Um, we as we'll go ahead. And and, oh, there's the tire choices there. Uh, what do you make of all that? Um, what do we got? Ray Rain on the hards. Only one opting for the hards. And we have Jeff Forgot and OJ Fields down there. P10 and P12 respectively on the softs. Well, I mean, that seems a bit strange to be starting out on the softs unless we do indeed have that um, rain coming in. Yeah, they're going to need an excuse to throw the softs away as soon as they can. Either safety car or if there is rain. Well, it looks pretty clear. So keep an eye on the Ferrari Ray Rain at the start on hard tyres. If he can get away well, he's in with a great shot, but break off starts. Yeah, everybody else on the medium tires. Um, Mako starting, well, I would say starting the formation, but coming up to the grid now, everybody else, the Williams of uh, oh, YRG coming up to the back now as they finally pull in. And it's going to be five lights as it looks like the timing tower freaked out on us. Five red lights. Hopefully no shambles at the back. Everybody will get a clean start. And away we go. With It looks like a slow start from the Haas in the back. Or just an amazing start from Jeff Forgot there as he makes his way up. And oh, we have Bonhomi. Oh, shambles somewhere. What happened? Uh, we had a collision with Ray Rain somewhere, unfortunately, uh, with YRG. Ray Rain doesn't seem to have any kind of damage, but YRG made up... Huge ground, but yeah, you can see a missing front wing there. Or not missing front wing, but a missing in plate there. Um, and Bon Homie retired. No idea what happened there. Um, as... Uh, Dante's taking the lead as well. Yeah, took it away from Mako as they go. Um, yep, okay, yeah, Dante took that lead. So the German driver taking the lead from his fellow countrymen there in the McLaren while his uh, teammate is out of the race already and i just gotta um, oh make a round make spun round there and just lost it um coming out of what is that bruxelles as hopefully thankfully his car is ghosted and not going to catch anybody out but no damage done it looks like besides possibly his ego there as thy milk menace unable to overtake him and make goes back up to raking speed racing speed excuse me as uh oh it looks like thy milk menace is missing a front wing as well so we missed some kind of shambles at the beginning, but no safety car or VSC was called initially. Yeah, even though there was a retirement on, so that was a little bit strange. I wonder if they were going to choose safety car, but it looked like a pretty big shunt as uh, Dante is already almost got a DRS gap at the front. Yeah, we have some movers and shakers here. YRG, oh, we saw an in plate come off of yet another car as well, where we are following this action. Um, who else is missing an in plate? Oh, that's that's going to be Furry Onyx just missing an entire front wing as these guys are going to dive into the pits now. Oh, my, hopefully, okay. <laughs> Almost lost it in the pits as YRG really early on the brakes there. But these guys head into the pits now, along with Thigh Milk Menace, who also was missing that front end plate earlier. Um, but we'll cut back to the front as Mako... Oh, yes, I was confused as to why Mako had lost his position, but it was uh, it was from his little spin -a rooney that he did earlier on. As we jump on board with somebody else who almost loses it coming out of you, Rogue. But Ray Rain making up some ground as well, I believe. I can't remember exactly uh, where they started, but we'll go ahead and pull out... Uh, tires and see what everybody else is going to be fitting so ooh, interesting choice from those guys who came into the pits uh, opting for the softs there um, possibly does that mean that we are going to be seeing rain I mean it seems I strange know, to be putting I... softs on this early in the race 
have we got desync with the timing tower as well? What's going on? I have no idea what's going on with the timing tower. Um, Robin already pulling out a or Dante, excuse me, pulling out a minute gap to uh, Robin How behind. But... Oh, we see Jeffrey spinning around in the Alpine. My goodness, still no safety cars, even though we have quite a bit of crashing going on and spinning. Yeah, it looked like he got away without damage, I think. It looked like it could have been one that just rips the front suspension off, but he's managed to get away with it. Yeah, oh, he is missing a little bit of front wing end plate on the left side there as he opts to go defensive. Oh, and we have the Red Bull of Ipswich yeah, spun well round well. too. <laughs> oh my goodness, the timing tower's broken. Xbox used up all the fuel for the safety car. DRS is finally enabled. Um, PlayStation without uh, any kind of bird Mylander this time around as Mako is looking to, uh, well, try and make up his positions uh, from his early spin. Our pole sitter currently sitting in P5 now as the Alpine dives into the pits. Went back, went right to the back with the crash, but he's fourth again. So I wonder if that was just a timing tower thing, whether he is actually made all his places back up because he looked like he was dead last. It did, yeah. It definitely did, but we, yeah, we can see him on screen visually that he's right there as Mako possibly going to be getting a move done with the help of that DRS, even though Ray Rain also has DRS as well as Mako is able to get that move done. Is Ray Rain going to be able to fight back? Probably not with those hard tires, especially through these as Mako picks up. Ooh, that's going to hurt him come down towards the final laps of this race. A three second time penalty for Mako already three laps into this race. Yeah, that's going to be painful, especially if there's a safety car later on. He's going to have to hope other people pick them up as well. It is quite an easy track to extend on, especially when you have fresh tyres. And even when you get to degradation, you start trying to push how you were earlier in the stint and the tyres are just not there. As I'm <laughs> trying to <laughs> follow the tower is having a thing out here. I, th I think it's finally sorted itself out, thankfully. And if that is the case, Dante with the whole five second lead over Robin and L it does certainly look like it on track. Dante taking a yeah, the huge track lead. Yeah. Already five seconds ahead. Yes. Mako finally getting I up say, to the podium position now. I don't want to say there's obvious reasons. Oh, you, you cut out there. Sorry about that. You don't want to say what? Oh, I don't want to say that Dante is in control of the race for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> we still have Tobacco in qualifying the minute you said he was on for pole. So. <laughs> yeah, that's very true as I just hid everything. Uh, that's not what I want to do. There we go. Mako almost gapping Sick Fusion now, uh, the driver behind. But uh, Bonhomie leaving the session. Um, yeah, but it looks like Sick Fusion is going to be just driving defensively to Ray Rain behind as they go side by side. Ooh, a little bit of contact possibly as Ray Rain gets spun around sideways now and thankfully is ghosted. Hopefully they stay ghosted as CB shutdown comes through now in the Alpine. So Ray Rain, oh, not a great. Was Mako went off somewhere too? What is that? What? Oh, the Alpine going wide. Uh, oh, a little dangerous rejoin to the track there. But Mako managing to avoid any kind of death. What is happening here? It seems like Spa just always produces shambles no matter what division you are, what platform you are. It just seems to cause mayhem for anybody at random. Yeah, this track is a different beast sometimes, especially when you're battling as well. It's, it's easy to make a mistake and it can punish you through the next sequence of corners. So it looks like the timing tower is now reasonable again um seems to fix itself up <laughs> just a little bit of uptime and then it's uh it's working again as wow the time penalties are starting to pour in for these guys and somehow we still have yet to have a safety car though there are a lot of people backed up here or not backed up per se but it looks like a drs train has formed um all the way from p7 down to what would that be p9 potentially uh p11 excuse me um as we got that forming up now as Dante is still <laughs> extended his gap now to seven seconds. So, oh, as there's a Alpine spun round again of CB shutdown 
But we saw them uh, struggling a bit earlier as well as the Haas is back off. And okay, yeah, everybody just keeps uh, deciding to uh, get caught out. Not sure if there was front wing damage on that. Oh, it looks okay. Yeah, it definitely looks okay. I don't see any end plates missing. So visually it looks fine, but he might be experiencing some kind of uh, troubles. OJ, OJ feels in the Haas um, this time around as we'll cut back to this battle for P6, or no, excuse me, P7, all the way down to uh, P, well, P10 now. What happened? It looked like Ipswich no longer able to keep up with the, oh, we saw the Mercedes of Furry Onyx go off, and that is Furry Onyx retired from the session. Surely a safety car. Yep, there it is, the full course safety car. So, lap five, do the hard runners come in? Or excuse me, the medium runners, do you come in for the hard tire this early on? Yeah, I would pit for hards and just, you you got to remember, there's a couple of laps behind the safety car as well. It's a little bit long to stint, but you have to. I mean, if you're Dante, you have such a big gap. Even if the others don't pit, you're still going to come out in a decent place. I think yeah, it's a bit of a no-brainer for them to pit. The hard runners, different story, they might have to just stay out and hope there's another safety car later on. Indeed, Dante does come into the pits. Yeah, I think that's a good decision. We saw him win in Imola in season four a similar way. He was on, he just, he has a habit, Dante, of putting himself on a good strategy. Even if he's back in that season, he probably wasn't the quickest. But he put himself on a clever strategy every time, and it oh, was that. OJ Fields. Yeah, that's always tough when you get a track limits penalty behind the safety cars. We'll keep an eye on Dante. They do come out ahead of Ray Rain, but is more importantly, is Robin going to come out? It looks like Robin comes out behind Ray Rain, but they have gotten their pit stop out of the way for this session. So, um, yeah, I. I'm going to rely on you, and, and I'm going to assume that these guys are going to make it to the end of the race as they finally catch up to the back of the safety car as people still continue to come in. Interesting choice from CB Shutdown to fit soft tires. Um, He's obsessed with the soft tires. I mean, they, I guess they have fresh sets, but they didn't use them all the time, but they're not a good race to wear, really. So. Yeah, we'll keep an eye know. on these guys, too, what tires they have fit. It looks like that Williams team has another set of softs selected for YRG as well. Could this potentially be that bug that we've seen as it looks like Thy Milk Menace Sir... Whoa, okay, that was kind of weird. Um, but they've put on medium tires that are worn. One lap old medium tires. I don't think those are going to go to the end of the race. I mean, you might uh, have a better idea. Well, you yeah, definitely do yeah. have a better idea than myself. I would say that's sketchy. I'm just thinking the first in medium tires. 11 laps and then they're finished so it, the, what, how many does he do 17 that's 16 17 laps is a lot that's i mean if it works it'll look like a genius but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i'd maybe give him the benefit of the doubt if they weren't gonna be all bunched up again but um yeah i just don't think with wheel to wheel racing that those mediums are gonna go to the end of the race even and even still, I mean, we kind of have a bit high fuel load, higher fuel load, I guess, um, currently. So those, it's going to be a big ask to get those medium tires to go all the way to, oh, and that's certainly not going to help him either. Oh, <laughs> As Advocat does indeed overtake him on the four lap old soft tire. So a lot of interesting choices for strategy up and down the field. Um, everybody else with hard tires looking pretty solid and unfortunately Ray Rain starting out on the hard tires kind of box themselves in um, to not be able to take advantage of the safety car which is the risk that they take uh, so they're going to be hoping for a another late safety car and as we saw in PC Division 4 yellow breeds yellows um, to uh, plug some NASCAR for you um, yeah it just kept kept seeing yellows kept seeing safety cars full course yellows for PC Division 4. I believe the total count at the end of the race was four of them. Um, and it was, yeah, it was. Four full safety cars. Uh, we had three full safety cars and one VSC that lasted about half a lap, that VSC. So it was, uh, it was quite the race as we see YRG head back into the pits again um, to pit and Advocate as well. So there must have been some kind of bug with Jeff, as I know that it's, it's tough to get the. Uh, to get the strategies, to get him to do the strategy uh, 
for you. Yeah, he quite often just either ignores you or tells you information you just don't need. Um, oh, and Ray Rain's lost it behind safety car. He's oh out. no, Ray Rain! <laughs> Where is that? Is that's that on the Kimmel straight. Halfway down the straight. Yeah, he's just how did. Oh, oh don't, don't hit him. him. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite scary. His <laughs> Ray Ring was not ghosted, but that's a very odd place for them to lose it. And he was spun around. It looked like he had suspension damage, so I imagine that he had some kind of collision with the wall there. Uh, yeah, I think it's wow. a hard tire warm up. It's so hard to get any, any temperature into the rear tires with the hard tires. It's. I, I was struggling yesterday with the medium, but I could not get them above 80 degrees in the rears. So the hards must be a nightmare. And the problem is, if you have no rear grip, the slow corners just become miserable. Yeah, I... Um... Wow, he was... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, he was it. He was still in with a shout in this race if there was another safety car later on. Yeah, definitely. Um... Absolutely, yeah, and he would be on the faster tire come the end of the race as Mako Sick Fusion is dropping positions for some reason. Did they just get hit? What is going on here? Uh, I am much confused right now <laughs> as to what's going on. It looks like the safety car is going to be out for another lap, even though uh, Advocate did... Oh, nope, I lied. Um, we had a late message for the safety car coming in this lap. So it's going to be Dante uh, leading these guys around. That was uh, strange. Don't know what happened. Codemasters be doing Codemaster things, I guess. Yeah, that was very late. We saw yesterday that the first safety car lasted 10 years and the second one was like a lap <laughs> and, they were, and they ran out of fuel. Now they're like, right, we're going. So the soft tire should have a massive advantage for a lap and then should drop off again. And it looks like Dante has finally put it down, coming out of the final corner here. Go ahead and remove that, and they get a brilliant start is also get this out of the way as well. Um, but hopefully everybody else is able to make it through as it looks like we have some swapping going on. Oh, that is CB shutdown. The man on the soft tires spun round. Thankfully, it looks like the car is still intact. No damage to that front wing as they continue to do some ballerina spins. No sympathy spins uh, as Thigh Milk Menace picks up a three second time penalty but oh who's that round oh. uh that was another car round yellow breeding yells thy milk menace we just mentioned him and he's spun round as well uh so interesting restart to say the least as we'll go ahead and cut back to the front of the race as we are out on board with uh mako currently who is looking to continue to uh scrap together uh and rebuild from his uh his little spin that he had early on in the race which he seems to be doing quite a great job so far yeah that safety car was great news for, for Mako he's, he's back in the race now he was 7 or 8 seconds off when the safety car came out it's a bunch of going back up if he can clear Robin quickly then he might get to put some pressure on uh, but he has got that time penalty so that's that's going to hurt if, if Dante keeps the clean the whole race yeah, and we've seen Dante on the mediums, it should be noted, on the mediums he had some absolute incredible pace. But as did Mako too, able to make his way back up into the top three by the time the safety car came out. So it'll be interesting to see, and like you mentioned, yeah, he needs to get around Robin um, as CB shut down, picks up a three second time penalty. Time penalties continuing to roll in, but it's going to be a big ask to try and get that three second time. As, ooh, it looks like that's going to be CB shut down again, the soft tire runner continuing to spin uh, around but we'll cut back to Mako as these guys won't have any DRS for this lap it'll be next time around I believe that they'll get that uh, DRS um, so he's gonna have to try and stay within that gap that one second gap as it looks like Dante's already out of DRS threat to Robin ahead so Mako really needs to get a move on Robin if he wants a shot at winning this race yeah it's an interesting one for, for Dante because he kind of wants Robin there to protect him. So if he gave Robin DRS, that would help. But he's got also oh, full course safety race. car. What? Is that? I think that's in... Is that from CBS... From CB Shutdown? Is he's he he's three, or? back up and running. Oh, he is missing a full front wing. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Wow. 
that seems Maybe back in the pit lane. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, to get off those soft tires. I guess he triggered the safety car that he needed to be able to get a free pit stop, I guess. But, um, yeah, a, a full safety car again for these guys. So, I mean, I guess nobody else on the soft tire or the hard tire runners are going to be able to take advantage of this. Or Ipswich, I guess. Okay, Ipswich did not start out. We saw he didn't have to come in for a wing change, I believe. Um, yeah, I don't know what it's I believe he was one of the runners that started on the softs. Um, so he has a fresh set of wheels. He could go to medium. Everyone else is probably going to just stay out, I guess. Yeah, I would imagine that that's what they would do. I mean, is there a possibility if you do have a fresh set of mediums, would you opt to go in, or do you just want to hold position right now? The problem is that you should go in so many places because the safety car hasn't. It ended so shortly ago, the field isn't stretched enough, really. So I think you probably have to stay out. Also, it's going to be close to the end of the tire, well, it looks like it's a fair few people. Yeah, missing. Ipswich coming in, OJ Fields coming in. We'll go ahead. I, I wonder if they know. I'm pretty sure in this game you only get one fresh set of mediums. So I had this in the league race a while ago. I pitted for new mediums and I got 58% of the mediums back on the car. <laughs> it, yeah, it looks so, like Ipswich does go back to the mediums. OJ Field has gone onto hard tires. Or is he coming off of those now? I believe he's gone onto hard tires. So, he so should be able to easily get to the end of the race on those uh, without any kind of loss in tire performance. Um, but yeah, Ipswich there. Two lap old tires. Thankfully, we'll be doing a couple of laps under safety car. I don't know if. We're going to keep the safety car out all the way until CB Shutdown catches up. Um, or if it's just once Thigh Milk Menace comes and catches the back of the pack, then they'll be good to go to green lap running. So um, for, for those on the medium tires, it might be a good shout as Sick Fusion is losing positions again under safety car? No. Okay. This is so weird. Oh, is he... Gets a little love tap from Jeff for God there <laughs> behind well, just, him. Just saying hello. Jeff for God, by the way, in seven lap holes. Oh, excuse me, yeah. So old mediums there. Uh, he's not going to make the end. Yeah, he's, he's. I don't think he'll make the end from here. 12 laps. That's, that's a long way to go, isn't it? Is that overtaking? Oh my goodness. What's going on? He's just taking a note out of your boy Max's uh, book. He's, and yeah. Wait. Oh. Oh, he is overtaking. What it? Okay. <laughs> Poor Sick Fusion <laughs> being forced to give position, like, to nearly everybody and the grandma. And what? What are we doing here, guys? <laughs> they bang wheels. Then. Did they bang wheels? Are you taking it back? I think. Wait, Jeff forgot is now teleported back. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I think. I don't know what's going on, but I think the game was telling you both they have to be the first man. Oh, this is entertaining to say the least, but also kind of painful. Uh, almost like watching a car crash. You just can't turn your eyes away. Um, as he gives Mako some love taps. Oh my, that is... Oh, that's a... Those aren't even love taps. That, that's a bit aggressive, if I'm being honest. Um, this must be uh, decent, surely. That, that can't have actually... Because he's not got a penalty for it. Right up Mako's ass. <laughs> yeah, we saw him teleport too. <laughs> all the way back to the P6, I believe, when they were coming down the uh, long straight. And then teleport up again. So yeah, there, he must have some kind of desync. It seems to just be specific to Jeff or God, though. I, I don't see anybody else uh, with any kind of connection yeah. issues, but um, so. who knows. Uh, this is perfect, by the way, for the CD shutdown, because not only does he get to catch up to 40 odd seconds he was behind, but. When the safety car comes in, he'll have warm tyres because he'll have actually driven at full pace for a lap. Yeah, that's a that's a good shout because these hard tyres we we've seen them time and time again. Even just not even under safety car running, but just coming out of the pits, we saw I believe it was Eye Hunter uh, last weekend in Spain uh, just drop it on the hard tyres as Jeff or God continues to give uh, Mako a reminder that he's here and on track, but. Um, yeah, that's a that's a very good point. CB shutdown is going to be looking very good once he catches up to the back. Um, 
hopefully does it soon enough so that we can get back to some green flag running as we are at the halfway point now in the race. But whew, it's been an interesting one again. I, I got to be honest, I don't think it's been as shambly as the Xbox race has been. Certainly not as much as the PC4 race, but man, Spa is just a different monster. <laughs> a different monster. And I guess I see why we keep it on the calendar. Um, can't let you guys have a bunch of easy races or boring ones like Bahrain, so. Wow. <laughs> Nightmares. Oh, my God. The oh Mako! Spain. Uh, yeah, that was Mako. Mako gone round. And I don't know if that was generated from Jeffer God. If finally the sync stopped and Jeffer God actually spun him round. Or what? But it safety card. Yeah, it did. Yeah, he didn't get a penalty. So I that just seems strange. Oh, it's the track screen. Oh no, the safety car is coming in this lap. Excuse me, sorry. The safety car's in this lap, so Mako is going to have pop tires. I mean, at least he'll got some temperature in the rear tires, I guess. Yeah, is uh, right. Dante again leading these guys round? Um, Dante must be sick of this. He keeps playing a good gap, <laughs> and then immediately there's someone perishing. And he has to do the whole thing again. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you'd rather be in the lead than uh, do it, keep doing that than doing anything else. Yeah, Jeff for God doesn't seem to be putting any kind of temperatures into their tires either, so they're probably going to be on some cold tires as we'll ride on board. Pull up the telemetry to see when he goes out. I imagine it again, he's just going to send it coming out of the final corner, and indeed he does. And already, look at that gap that he's formed to Robin behind. Caught Robin sleeping as we'll go ahead and turn that back off. Um as it seems like it's been a calm start so far. Ipswich possibly losing positions again to Advocate as it looked like there was a little bit of tire contact and uh, well that's that done. Um, Ipswich managing to stay ahead now as it looks like Thy Milk Menace is wanting to make a move. Nobody going side by side through you Rogue. Ooh! But it looks like Advocate... Ooh! OJ Fields looking to make a move. Oh wow! Advocate really bad run coming out of Radiator there. Um, losing Min nearly all the positions <laughs> all, all the way down wait what's uh, a car spun round uh, Alpine CB shut down we've seen them uh, facing the wrong way a couple of times this race as Mako is making his way up now as he's going to go alongside OJ Fields is he going to be able to get a move done as Dante already a second ahead we've seen him get that gap uh, catching Robin sleeping but man what kind of what a race this has been for poor Mako uh, this time around as he's able to get that move done. Yeah, that was a very good move. It was all part of the plan. Spin, warm up the hard tires, and now he's in that spot. There's a yellow flag. Diamond Menace is out. Let's see what that looks Another full court safety car. Not even a whole lap. You can, yeah, there you go. You can see him. They caught up. That's where Antonio Giovinazzi is. Well, actually, a little bit further ahead, but... Yeah. That oh. Really, really easy and it's really easy to validate as well, because the, the the fast line is on the curb. But if you don't quite, if you understeer a bit and you only clip the curb, it will spin you. So it's a bit of a dangerous one. That one has has been proven. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. we have some prime examples uh, to show us. Jeff or God finally coming into the pits to get off of those old mediums. What tire would he? take in this instance i don't know what he would as oj fields picks up a five second penalty for diving into pit lane i guess we could see what tires they have ready for him hard tires hard tires it's a safe call i guess we'll cut to oj fields as well to see what kind of tires oh as jeff or god teleports in front of him so it looks like that jeff or god not the best connection but that hasn't stopped people from running in the past um as oj fields fits some old mediums are are those going to get him to the end this is what I mean. Like, I've done this before where you pit and you think they're going onto fresh tires and they give you. They're very heavily used. I doubt they'll make it. But I don't think that was deliberate from OJ Fields. Yeah, Maybe it was. yeah. Maybe that's what he feels he has left on the tires. But Dante is just back <laughs> to <laughs> waiting for the safety car to end. <laughs> Thankfully, I would imagine that the safety car is just going to be out for one lap. Um, I don't know if in the game it has to be out for at least two laps or if it can just do one lap and then come in, but um, everybody's basically bunched up. OJ Fields will be back. 
by the end of Sector 2 at least, at the, at the latest, I would imagine. So um, hopefully we get some more green flag running, but man, NASCAR was right. Yellow does breed yellows. But I guess it's made it a semi-com race for these guys at the front here. Um, hey, being able to hang on. Mako being spun around a couple of times, unfortunately. But he just keeps making a challenge for himself. I guess I guess that's his his uh, winning strategy this year. He's just got too bored of uh, all the wins in DNF. So he decided to come up with his own challenge. But currently in P6... Possibly on the podium by the end of the race, carrying a three-second time penalty. I guess that's something else that we could look at as well. We could pull up the time penalties and see um, what that's looking like for these drivers. OJ feels, ooh, eight seconds. We saw him pick up that five seconds speeding in the pit lane penalty. As it looks like the safety car is going to be out for another lap. Uh, CB shut down carrying six seconds worth of time penalties and Mako and Ipswich carrying three with them. Wow, what, uh, what a race it's been so far. Uh, <laughs> hard to make any sense of it other than Dante's been absolutely brilliant uh, managing his pace. Yeah, Dante, has he led every lap? I believe he has once he inherited the lead. I don't know what it was. As, yeah, OJ Fields does come into the pit, so again, you're right. I don't think he was given the tires that he wanted. Oh, as he picks up another five-second speeding in the pit lane penalty. That's not going to help him. But thankfully, I believe he will be able to serve his five-second penalty uh, in the pit lane this time as they have a set of hard tires for him. So yeah, he will be able to serve that five-second time penalty. But man, what what a bummer as he picks up another one. Serving the penalty is a good idea and he should be able to catch the pack. He's always got to be careful again because he's on, on, he's on cold, hard tires. Oh, there's been a collision with the safety car. So he'll be shut down as hit. Looks like no wing damage, and his teammate overtakes him. Um, There's been a lot of overtakes in this race. <laughs> and somehow they've been legal too. So um, yeah, not sure if somebody's abusing the. Uh, I just wanted to see the tire life of OJ Field. Okay, three laps. But yeah, I'm not sure if somebody's been abusing it, or if just as these Alpine guys continue to figure out who goes where, uh, sorting out team orders. Um, sorting out their drivers for next season too. Uh, Alpine just running around with their heads cut off currently, like a chicken with its head cut off in real life, and uh, it looks like it's translating a little bit onto the track. But we've seen Jeff or God swapping positions multiple times under safety car without consequence. So I, I, I don't know. I have no ideas. OJ Fields is finally caught up to the back. Will the safety car be in this lap? Will we see it out by the end of next lap? I don't know. together again now we're all bunched up so i don't really think there's a reason for it to be out another lap but this codemaster's probably get a call oh there we go there it is right on time this time not a late call thankfully dante's done two good restarts yep and i'd imagine he's going to do another good one here As, is he going now? No? Okay. Yeah, well, it's going to be real. He's going to get auto-braked by the uh, AI. But, yep, I'd imagine he's going to wait again coming out of the final chicane. I mean, it's worked for him twice. Why not go for it a third time? Um, Robin just unable to keep pace with him. As indeed, it looks like he is going to wait coming out of the final corner. And we are gone and underway. Another safety car restart under our belts. We'll go ahead and cut back to the back of the group as Ipswich. Looking to go around the outside of Sick Fusion, but we have some more changes going on in the back as well. Everybody thankfully threw cleanly, it looks like, and as soon as I cut away, oh my gosh, Mako is... I'll just ride on board with Mako. No, it looks like we're having some side-by-side -side action here through you, Rogue, and Ipswich able to stay ahead of sick fusion and into the podium positions for the time being but with how many changes we've seen this race overtaking uh both under the safety car and under green flag conditions as it looks like we see oj fields overtaking jeff for god now 
uh, Jeffer struggling a little bit to get those hard tires working. Um, but thankfully he's able to stay uh, in the race for more than just uh, 100 meters like we saw last time out in Spain. Yeah, that Spain carnage star is <laughs> just pure FRS. Oh, <laughs> uh, and I have a... Oh, I was going to say I had a bad feeling about... To, oh, and he does decide to go around the outside of OJ Fields. There, that was a pretty good move. Uh, he definitely had the speed and uh, was able to get it done. And he's looking at Advocat ahead now. Um, Jeffer on a roll currently as... Oh, this, this desync is something else. Oh, yeah. It is, it is definitely something else. It's hurting my eyes a little bit. We'll go ahead and cut to Mako. The next closest battle that we have on track as he's looking at sick fusion ahead currently half a second behind and of course it's going to be a while till we get any kind of drs uh, we'll have to wait to the next time around i believe but he's able to stick on the back there of sick fusion ahead as this race finally we're able to catch our breaths a little bit um, as Mako continues to hold that gap, is he going to be able to hold on to it enough and possibly do an overtake without any kind of DRS down the Kimmel straight? He is able to hang on to the back, but yeah, it's just not enough. It looks like, it looks like it's OJ feels potentially, but whoever it was, it looks like we've managed to survive through it as oh as i say that and cut away we have somebody else spun round no oh that is cb shutdown again uh taking an alternate route through there does it look like they were struggling a little bit and that's going to be advocate down the inside is it oh that w uh, oh okay i don't know what happened there <laughs> my goodness that was quite interesting. We see uh, CB Shutdown go off the track, then Advocate able to come up and potentially make a move and stick their nose up the inside, but CB Shutdown says no, and that helps his teammate through, and OJ Fields, I think, was just caught by surprise. So that is that, as Sick Fusion is managing that gap to Mako and building it a little bit more, but I don't, he needs to put on a little bit more pace if he wants to be able to be out of threat of DRS from Mako behind. Yeah, interestingly, Robin has actually held on to the DRS, or he's very close to the DRS gap. If he can stay there and get in the DRS, he may be able to farm his battery a bit more, but it depends whether Dante is just saving it, ready to deploy it down the straight. Yeah, it looks like, as soon as you speak about it, it looks like he's starting to build that gap. So I won't have to worry about Dante, but... This will mean that we might potentially see an overtake from Mako down the Kimmel straight here with five laps left to go. Um, as Sick Fusion picking up a three second time penalty running wide there, feeling the pressure from Mako, which is going to help Mako tremendously and neutralize this race. And importantly, Ipswich ahead also has a three second time penalty. So these guys are battling for track position here um, and the final podium position. Mako unable to get a move done this time around on Sick Fusion, but Sick Fusion has closed up the, the gap to the back of Ipswich and Dante again just casually in control of this race up ahead second and a half to Robin behind. Yeah he did extend that gap and must have just had enough in reserve. He played it quite smart because it's tempting just to abuse the battery straight away but he's just kept it nice. He has been in control, I don't know why I've said that but he really has been uh, controlling the race out front. Yeah, our pole sitter here, not having the best of days, but he again, he might just be creating a challenge for himself, um, as I think Povey should possibly be doing over on Xbox. Spin around a couple times, and then fight your way back up. Do a last to first to last to first challenge, um, you know, because why not? But, uh, I mean, we saw you and Quimbulus make your way up into the podium positions and a race win over on Xbox yesterday from starting from last and second to last as well, so... Um, it's definitely possible, and Mako still has uh, a couple of laps left to be able to get something done to possibly uh, scrape by with a podium as these guys continue to stay within that crucial one second DRS range to the cars ahead. So, Sick Fusion looks to be a bit farther back from Ipswich, though now he's starting to close the gap 
this time around. These two were teammates uh, up until this season, I believe, in the Red Bull team. So Sick Fusion make the move over to Mercedes to be alongside Jamlad or Furry Onyx, however you want to refer to them. As Sick Fusion gets his elbows out, goes up the inside, and it looks like that's the move done on Ipswich. But Ipswich, never mind, excuse me, Ipswich not ready to go down without a fight as Sick Fusion goes ghosted and Mako's joined the fight. Hello, Mako. Side by side to Brazil. Oh, <laughs> me oh my! Ipswich losing that position to Sick Fusion, but we still have four laps to go. Mako looking to make a move now down this uh, Puhan, I believe. Right, that's the name of this corner, Puhan. Uh, whatever the name is, we've seen Mako make a move up the inside earlier in this race, but it looks like it's not going to happen this time around as Dante is now two seconds ahead. Of Robin and L, but we should give credit to Robin as well, who has also managed to get a two second gap, two and a half second gap to Sick Fusion behind. So those guys have just been casually cruising um, throughout the entirety of this race up in P1 and P2, respectively. Just to try and, if you possibly can, just stay within three seconds because you never know when three seconds have to be. picks up a silly penalty on the last lap. It, it can happen. Um, but Mako is now going to be a bit frustrated in this train because everyone in front of him it's going to be he's got DRS but so do the people he's trying to overtake which is just not fun yeah and, and another thing to notice as well is we have some battling going on at the back as well we'll go ahead and cut to that for a moment but Ipswich with the tire advantage of the medium tires as OJ Fields parks his car up the inside of the chicane of the bus stop chicane and it looks like that's that move done on Advocat in more importantly, OJ Fields is going to have some DRS as well, so Advocat won't have that kind of advantage. It's neutralized as they both pick up some DRS as we... Ooh, we should have been watching this battle. Excuse me. As uh, Mako is looking to get a move done on Ipswich, but Ipswich with that tire advantage, able to hang on, but Mako finally getting around. And that is that move done in that position, gained up into P4. Looking to get to P3 now. Yeah, it was a nice move, a little bit of contact on the exit, but I think it's a very tight exit, so perhaps understandable. But it looks like the best Mako is going to be able to do is P3. I don't see him closing, unless Robin, and Robin would need to get a lot of penalties. So Robin and Dante are looking relatively safe if they can just keep it clean in the last couple of laps. Yeah, it should be. Hopefully, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no commentators curse or anything, but it should be fairly fairly easy for them um, throughout the rest of this race. But Mako, oh boy, I can only feel for him as he lost the position um, starting out in the race. And he had that unfortunate spin as well on the first or second lap as he's going almost wheel to wheel with Sick Fusion ahead. But <laughs> Ipswich as well. I, I still don't know who's going to be able I think just Ipswich's tires, his medium tires, have fallen off now. Although I say that, and he's still able to fight with them, but I'd imagine that the pace is going to be probably lost. Um, I don't know. I'm not an expert driver. You're the spa merchant, so uh, I'll rely on you to make that call as to if those tires are dead. But they come up to the Kimmel straight now, and is Mako going to be able to get a move done on Sick Fusion ahead? He's got the DRS. It should be... Oh, a little bit of wheel contact and Ipswich as well joining. Of course, no surprise there. As, oh, Ipswich loses it a little bit, so that's that. That's him gone from this battle with only f two laps left to go. He's not going to be able to make that ground up to be able to fight for P3, but Mako still going at it <laughs> with Sick Fusion there as they go side by side and Mako goes around Sick Fusion. This is pretty interesting. Because we still have two laps to go, and if Sick Fusion's able to hang on to the DRS, and if Mako's unable to break away, then, I mean, it could just be a matter of who gets DRS last for this final podium position. It's from but it depends how much pace, if Mako has any pace, he has to use it now and try to get away. Yeah, he seems to be gaining it from Robin. Robin's really dropped off of Dante. I wonder whether Robin's just taking it easy now, and he knows there's nothing to gain by... By pushing harder, he's got P2 if he wants it. 
Dante's four seconds ahead, and unless, unless Dante does something remarkably silly, he's he's taking the win. Yeah, and Robin's probably reassured as well with the fact that the drivers behind him carry time penalties. So not sure exactly how many track warnings Robin has, but that's got to be something that he feels confident about as well. That he can even lose some positions on track as long as he's able to stay within three seconds, then he should be able to come home uh, with that P2. But um, why not go ahead and keep it on track? But yeah, you're right. It does look like Robin is losing some pace. Uh, we see the ERS lights flashing on the back of his car. As Mako is on a roll right now, it looks like he's just closed down that gap to Robin ahead. As we can see, there's Mako in the rearview mirrors of that Alpha Tauri. So Mako is making his way up, but with one and a half laps left, I just don't see it uh, happening for Mako to be able to get that three second gap to Robin and actually secure that P2. So it looks like P3 might just be the best as we see Sick Fusion not overtaking Mako. Do you? As Jeff or God picks up a three-second time penalty, excuse me. <clears throat> um, but do you suspect that Sick Fusion just opted to not go for that overtake so they could have DRS? He knows that he'll have DRS behind Mako on the final lap, or does he just simply not have that pace for to catch Mako? Yeah, possibly. The, the problem is if Mako gets DRS. Oh no! A Sick oh, Fusion goes wide. wide. Yeah, that's going to be the end of the overtake, but Mako was doing the right thing, closing up to Robin enough to get in his DRS, and then once he, if he could make that trade, if he has DRS as well, it's going to be very difficult for him to be passed. But yeah, the Mercedes looks like it's made a mistake in there, so he's just going to have to bring it home, I think. Yeah, uh, with Dante coming around the final corner now to start the final lap of this race, brought to you by Credit One Bank. Um... There he goes. One of our only three drivers, four drivers, excuse me, without time penalties. Uh, and yet again, we had yet another race of attrition um, where everybody who finishes the race will actually, since we've crossed the 90% mark, uh, everybody will be getting points who manage to live another day. Uh, as we see a yellow flag come out for CB shutdown, uh, somehow with all their spins, they still manage to uh, come home P7 currently well i say currently he, they might have another oh as mako gets a move done on robin with the help of that drs now we can see those blinking lights on the back of robin's car as they've been blinking for the past couple of laps now um as mako moves up into p3 and he looks to start possibly building a three second gap he i just don't think that there's enough track left for him to be able to do it He got one second already. It depends how much battery he's got left. Yeah, we can that final run. Oh, yeah, it's just over 15% uh, left in the tank for him. And interestingly, with all those safety cars, he's carrying an extra five laps worth of fuel there. Um, yeah, well, you, you can start the race on exactly the number of laps of fuel. And you can have number of fuel by like half a lap around it. So with all those safety cars, everyone's going to be carrying. He's man. Gap is growing. <laughs> it is, but yeah, just not enough track left. Unless Sick Fusion uh, is able to harass Robin a little bit, I I don't yeah. think that he's gonna be able to get that three seconds. Well, chicane, sorry, the bus stop. He should be fine. Let's see. He's don't take cross the line. Oh, he's a oh. bit wide. Ooh! But is it enough? Two seconds? Oh, not enough for Mako. Brilliant last lap uh, effort from him but this battle that's been unfolding all the way at back for the final points paying positions uh, has been occurring for quite some time and advocate we saw him pick up the uh, the penalty uh, earlier on and both of these guys on three seconds worth of time penalties important to note that CB shutdown did carry 14 seconds worth of time penalties with him so ooh, advocate so they are battling for this final these that extra point for p9 but man oh man it looks like oh yeah just too sloppy there and a bit too deep on the brakes from advocate so that's going to be p9 for jeff or god as they come across the line what another insane race here at spa oh boy <laughs> oh boy as we see yrg get driver of the day um lc who would you have to give driver of the day to 
ironically, Drive of the Day is probably for me the one we saw the least of, which is Dante. He was just out front, controlled the race. I think he led every lap. Um, you know, every time there was a safety car, he just rebuilt the gap again. No track limit penalties, no spins. Did the job. Um, but also, well done to Marco coming back from. I mean, I don't know how many spins he had yet. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> to come back to third, it's, it's damage limitation. Robin did a good job holding him off on that last lap. Yeah. So, uh, it was a bit closer than I was expecting. <laughs> just be, uh, easily P2, but he, he wanted to make it entertaining for us. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely what it was. Yeah. What what an interesting race uh, and, and an exciting finish to it as well, like you said. And yeah, since you gave Dante driver of the day, I think I'll have to give. Um, it, it has to be Dante or Robin because they just had. They were. Not necessarily, well, Robin especially towards the end there, feeling a bit under threat from Mako, but um, they just had such a clean Sunday drive throughout the this entire race. So, um, yeah, we can see all those best lap times. Absolutely amazing. 17 seconds from Dante, so well done to him. But, man, what, <laughs> what an exciting race again. Uh, stay tuned, guys, as the, the PC division... Uh, oh, as I fiddle with all these buttons here. There we go. As I believe it's PC Division 2 going to be rounding out things for us. Uh, although I could be absolutely wrong as I go to the info and pull up all the different stuff. Where is the wonderful graphic app? There it is. Indeed, it is PC Division 2 that will be streamed on this channel in 10 minutes time. So stick around for that. Um, you can also catch the end of PC Division 3 if it hasn't finished yet. But thank you, LC, for tagging along uh, with me today and having a... It was nice having a CoCom in the booth. No worries. I enjoyed it. It was very good. Well, see you guys in a couple minutes' time where you can catch me with Quimbulus uh, as we take on Division 2. See you next time. <laughs>